Hey, uh, Floyd Fernbeam here. I was uh, doing a little work down here in the shop, and uh, it's that time of year when the kids is all going back to school, and started thinking about that, and uh, thinking about my own uh, school days back when I was a kid, and uh, I remember this one time I was in the high school. Uh, now our high school only went to the eighth grade, but we called it the high school because uh, it was up like on a big hill there, so uh, we called that the high school. So we had a high school, and then we had a low school, and there was a little trail uh, from one to the other, but um, the low school, that was down by the creek, and it, it was low, I'll tell you that. Uh, anytime you got any sort of a rainstorm and the water come up, that water come right into the school. I can tell you as a kid, many day, we was all sitting there on top of our desk doing our learning, and poor teacher, you know, she'd be up there sloshing back and forth at the blackboard from one side to the other, making waves, you know. Uh, we was all sitting on our desk with our feet up, but uh, and there was one kid in my class. He uh, he didn't have to go up to the chalkboard for nothing. He got out of that because he didn't have to swim. And teachers worried like if he fall down and and get in the water there, he'd drown or something. Because she was uh, worried about that. And she was all about safety, you know. And last thing you want is to have a a kid drown right in the middle of math class. And she was like, she said, I, I remember her saying, I remember uh, I carry this with me. Yet yeah, she would say you can drown in a teaspoon of water and i thought wow that's something there that's not much water there and then as i grown up i started thinking about that and i love sciences and everything but uh teaspoon you get yourself a teaspoon of water now that ain't much that's just a little bitty bit of water and you put that down on the floor and then you're going to try and drown in that you you cannonball i mean you you just cannonball right into that and see what happens uh maybe you break an ankle or or maybe that spoon end up somewhere where a doctor had to pull it out, but you ain't gonna drown. I mean, uh, again, I like science, but sometimes it just don't make no sense. Anyhow, so uh, to go from the, the low school to the high school, uh, they had a path cut because it was real, real bad uh, briars. And um, what they would do is uh, the kids would take care of that path, make sure it was cleared out. So every Monday, uh, teacher, she'd pick two kids and they'd get out of gym class and they would have to clear that path. You know, they'd have to go up there and clear off the brush and all the briars. And um, so what she'd do, she'd give them two kids a machete and, and they would go up there and, shoo, you know, whack everything out there. And they wasn't little kids like kindergartners. These were like, you know, third graders. So anyhow, they would uh, whack that, that all through there and uh, keep it all clean. And you would never get away with that now. You just know nowadays you would never get away with that. Uh, they give you probably like they give them kids weed eaters or something. You know, they wouldn't get no exercise at all. And you're probably thinking, well, it sounds kind of dangerous, you know, putting a putting a, a machete in a kid's hand. But all the years uh, we done that. I think there was only one minor incident. Uh, one of the kids, he was like he was swinging back and forth like this here and. And the other head, he got he got too close, and he seen it coming, so he like ducked down, you know, and turned his head, and the other kid, whoosh, it just took off like a, a piece of his ear right at the top there, and they bandaged that all up and everything, and uh, they took him to the doctor, and the doctor said, no, he's, he's fine, he still has perfect 20-20 hearing, so, you know, he's just absolutely great, and then uh, the funny thing, we called him Van Gogh, this kid, uh, but the funny part of that is, we had always called him Van Gogh, because his dad... Uh, he had the only Dodge Caravan that run and wasn't up on blocks in the yard. So that's how he got the name Van Gogh. I just thought that was a funny coincidence. Anyhow, uh, so Van Gogh's dad, he was our go-to fellow for the uh, for the field trips because we'd all pile in the van and he'd take us to the field trip. I remember this one time uh, we went to the sewer treatment plant and uh, he got 37 kids in that van. 37 kids. And when we got there, the kids was going to, you know, they, they pull that side door off and the kids is tumbling out all over the place. And this one kid, he was down near the bottom. He gets out and the poor fella, he had like a diamond plate uh, design right in his face, uh, imprint, because I think he was like down against the floor mat. And this one girl, I remember, she got out and she had like a, a on her cheek, she had like a real deep imprint it was a square and it had like little dots all over it and what had happened to that poor kid she got smushed real big she was like laying on that floor and she just got smushed uh she got smushed right onto one of them uh, peanut butter the store-bought peanut butter uh toast cheese crackers you know it's square and uh, that mushed there i'll tell you what uh she had that that mark you could see that probably for three weeks and then i bet for another two years probably if she'd blush or something you could still see that a little bit Anyhow, I have rambled on long enough. Uh, Y'all have a blessed day. And uh, like they say, your school days are your best days of your lives. So try and make the most of them.